Good morning. It is good to see everyone here at Carlisle First Church of God as we get ready to worship the Lord together on this Lord's Day. Beautiful, sunshiny day. It is good to see the sun after so many days of rain. Uh, a few announcements before we get started here this morning. The mother-daughter dinner uh, is going to be held on May 4th, so you want to get signed up for that. There is a sign-up sheet out there. Uh, that's also uh, coincides with the Shot at Life event, different times of the day, so you can make it to both. I'm planning on uh, being at both of those, uh, helping, not a mother, okay? Uh, I'm helping out there. Uh, so uh, in your bulletin, there is a sign-up sheet for the 2024 Shot at Life registration. Um, there's also in your bulletin uh, a flyer about help stop human trafficking that Pastor Greg is going to be talking about. Um, on the evening of April 21st at uh, 530. Uh, so come out and listen to him as well. And then uh, on the back side of that, there's your Camp Ulidua update. Uh, so check out what's going on at Camp Ulidua. Um, let's see, uh, some other announcements that we have here. Uh, Ian Heishman, are you here this morning, Ian? You are. Hey, Ian, would you stand up, please? Look back there at that young man. He's all surprised. He, he got a very special honor. He got his Eagle Scout Award, and so congratulations. <laughs> and he also uh, was accepted to Cor Cordell, Cornell this week. Yeah, so congratulations to that, to that as well. <laughs> All right. Jolly Old Timers, last day sign up for this Tuesday for David by Sight and Sound. Come on out and watch that. Bring a snack along with you because, you know, you can't watch a movie without a snack, right? So uh, come on out for that on Tuesday. Uh, da, 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 da. Spring Fling up at the Church of God. The, you can check out the announcement for that in your bulletin. Um, I think I got almost everything. New members class starts today. Yay, right? We've been trying to do that for months now. Uh, it will actually happen today. Across from the library is the classroom that we'll be meeting in. The ladies, uh, I just reminded them that I would need that classroom back when I did my new members. So I think you're probably moving back to the youth room again. So I'll talk to your teacher, though, to make sure that's OK. Um, that's it. Let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship this morning. Thank you.
Thank you, Mike. I ask those who are able to please stand at this time for our responsive call to worship, which is found in Psalm 119, verses 9 to 12. How can a young man keep his way pure? I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. Praise be to you, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the beautiful, sunshiny morning that you have given to us. We thank you for the rain, too, Lord, uh, as we need it. But, uh, wow, we got a lot of rain, and it sure is good to see the sun shining bright this morning. God, we thank you for uh, just the ways that you shine in our lives, Lord. And may we allow that light to shine uh, on others in this dark world that we are living in. God, we thank you for the opportunity to come together to worship you here today. That is why we are here. We thank you for your word that we will hear as well. And we ask your blessing upon this service at this time. Holy Spirit, move in us. Speak to us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll remain standing, those who are able, as we sing our first two hymns, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, followed by Take Time to Be Holy.
Thank you may be seated. Let's go to the Lord at this time in our morning prayer. A wonderful, gracious God, it is good to worship you, to sing praise to your name, to be reminded to take time to be holy as you are holy, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the coming together of your church. We thank you for last Sunday where we were able to celebrate your resurrection and say together, he is risen. He is risen indeed. And Lord, we mean that. We believe that. And we trust, Lord, that as you were resurrected from the dead, that those who are found in you, forgiven of their sins, one day we will be resurrected as well. We thank you, Lord, for being born again. We thank you, Lord, for purifying us of our sins. We thank you, Lord, for your love that you do pour on us. Fountains of love, as the song said. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for the ways that you care for us. And Lord, we lift up many who are broken physically, mentally, and we just ask, Lord, that you would mend them. We pray for those who, uh, Lord, have had surgeries and are in therapy right now. We pray for those uh, who are awaiting therapy. We pray for those who are going to have surgery, Uh, Lord, hip surgeries, broken arms. God, we just pray for each and every one. We thank you, Lord, for providing your care to us when we need it the most. We thank you for doctors as well, Lord, who have you, you have given them the capacity to heal and bring healing to those who need it. Lord, we thank you for uh, just loving us, caring for us as you do, as I've said, Lord, and Thank you that we can find peace in you when our minds are troubled as well. Lord, we thank you for your word to us that we are going to hear today. We pray that each and every one would just be blessed. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would just continue to work in us and through us. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus, in whose name we pray these things. Amen.
Lord, we do thank you for all the things that you have given to us and done for us. We ask, Lord, your blessing to be upon these tithes and these offerings this day. Lord, I pray that each and every one of us have given with a cheerful heart as we give to you, Lord. Bless these tithes and offerings, Lord. Use them in a mighty way. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated, and our special music this morning is from Mike Minnick. Amen. Thank you, Mike. So we got a little bit out of order in our series here on 1 Peter. Uh, we skipped ahead a little bit last week. Uh, the message kind of went a little bit better uh, with Easter Sunday. And um, so I wanted to go back uh, to what came before what we're talking about here this morning just a little bit. Uh, that passage uh, was talking about being holy as God 
is holy. Uh, he told us to do that, and you find that in Leviticus. Uh, so we have some things to do if we're going to be holy as God is holy. And one of those is preparing our minds for action, being self-controlled, setting our hope fully on the grace to be given us when Jesus Christ is revealed. We are to be obedient children, not conforming ourselves with the evil desire that we had uh, before we knew Christ Jesus as our Savior and our Lord. Peter reminds us that we should live our lives as strangers here in this world in reverent fear because we were bought at a price. Remember that? We were bought at a price, having been redeemed by what? By the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We need to be living our lives for him, holy lives, pleasing lives, not making excuses for our sins as we are so apt to do, but repenting when we do sin. Because the price he paid, and we talked about this last week, was very, very high. It cost him his life. God's plan for us is his son, Jesus before the beginning of this world, God had his plan in place. Those who believe in the Son who God raised from the dead and glorified are saved. Their faith and hope are in God. Is your faith and hope in God this day? I pray it is. Today we're going to be looking at this passage, we're going to continue on with it. I want to read it to you here this morning. It's 1 Peter chapter 1. We'll start with verse 22, and we'll be going to 25, and then we're going to stop over into the second chapter for three verses. All right? 1 Peter 1, beginning with verse 22, and we'll continue on into chapter 2. This is the word of the Lord. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord stands forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. This is the word of the Lord to us this day. Let's pray once again. God, we thank you for your word to us here this day. We pray, Lord, as we continue through this book of 1 Peter, that you would continue to speak to us. May we learn new things about you. May we learn new uh, desires, uh, your will that you have for our lives, Lord. And may we be obedient children to you. We love you, Lord. We thank you for this day once again that we have to come together here, praise your name, and hear from you. I pray, Lord, that you speak through your servant at this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Peter says, now that you have, been pure, now that you have purified yourselves. So if we, we stop there, all right, we're going to get the wrong idea of things. Now that you have purified yourselves. It sounds like that's something that we do for ourselves. Of course, that's not the case. As I've tried to get across to you many times, it doesn't matter how good you think you are. Please listen. It doesn't matter how good you think you are. You are a sinner. All of us are. And we need God's forgiveness. All of us. It doesn't work like this. I do two good things to cover up the one sin that I committed and, and now I'm good to go. It doesn't work that way, folks. Don't fall into that trap. Forgiveness is found in Christ alone. Amen? Amen. And if you continue on with the first verse, it says like this. Now that you have, been pure, that you have purified yourselves by obeying 
the truth. And going back to what Peter has been talking about previously in this chapter, we know that he is talking about our conversion experience. And that resulted in believing the gospel by believing in the truth. And who is the truth? Jesus. Absolutely. So by believing in Christ Jesus, you have been purified. Purified from what? From your sins. By believing in Christ Jesus. Now remember, Peter's been talking about living holy lives so far in this letter. Be holy because I am holy. And this is God talking, remember? It's not Peter saying, be holy because I'm holy, because Peter was anything from holy. He's a sinner just like us. Be holy because I am holy. Well, part of living a holy life is loving one another. And if you aren't loving your brothers and sisters in Christ, then you aren't living a completely holy life. A holy life means loving one another. God showed his love to us in his son, Jesus Christ. That love is in us when we come to accept his son as our Lord and Savior. And that love should well up inside of us. The word that Peter uses here is that we should love one another deeply. In another translation that I read, it says, love one another fervently. Okay? There's a word you don't hear much anymore, fervently. And when uh, the word translated there is ektenos in Greek, uh, that's translated deeply or fervently, uh, that means just, just intensely. And when I hear the word fervently, I think of the word to boil in Portuguese. See how similar that is there? Ferver is the word to boil in Portuguese. And probably uh, some roots there as to where we get our word fervently, right? And so uh, Peter says that uh, the love inside of us should be so intense that it just, it just boils up like water does when uh, you heat it up on the stovetop. And what happens when you let that pot of water on there and it really, really gets to boiling? Well, it, it boils up so much that it overflows the pan, doesn't it? And then it messes up your stovetop and you got to go clean all that up. It spills out over the top. Peter says that because of the love that God has for us, because we have been purified by believing in Christ, our love should not be contained. It should spill out over for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen? Let it boil up out of you, church. Love one another. Do it with intensity and do it from the heart. The love here is a fraternal love for one another. This isn't a kind of love that the world shows to us. And we shouldn't expect to receive that kind of love from the world and those who don't know Christ. We should expect this kind of love from our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Peter says, for you have been born again. Amen? Have you been born again? For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. So he's, he's making a point here. Having been born a Jew doesn't get you into heaven. And he's making this point here for them. Remember, he's writing to a lot of the Jews that have been spread out because of persecution. So that's the perishable seed. We can make the argument for us Gentiles. Just because I'm a good person doesn't get me into heaven. Right? So being born a Jew, being born a, gen, a good Gentile, a person who does a lot of good things, none of these things are going to get us into heaven. Being born again isn't some kind of human creation. Something that we make happen for ourselves here with what we have or who we are. For those who have accepted Christ, they have been born again. And Peter uses the same ideas we find Jesus making in the Gospel of John. 
You have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. We know that the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sins. It is also through God's word, though, that we learn of our need to be forgiven, that we learn of our need to be born again. Dying to our sins and being born again in Christ Jesus. The word of God has its part in leading us to be born again. We are born the first time as children of Adam. And we share in what what is called the corruption or Adam's corruption. And what is that? It's sin. And we need to have a second birth. To be born again, and that makes us children of God. As Jesus said, you must be born again. To enter into the kingdom of God, you must be born again. God's word is living and enduring, Peter says here. Look at what it says in Hebrews. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. The word of God is living and enduring. God's word is eternal, everlasting. It will not fade It will never become irrelevant. Look how long a history we have with God's word. And it's still relevant to us today. God's word is truth. And we can and we need to trust in his word. The word of God is crucial to a well-fed and functioning church. Amen? It sure is. Vernon McGee said this about the word of God, and I couldn't agree more with him. He said, my friend, we need the preaching and the teaching of the word of God above everything else. I do not mean to minimize the place of music, the place of methods, and the place of organization, but there is absolutely no substitute for the word of God today. Amen? The church needs to be careful. A lot of churches have fallen into this trap. The church needs to be careful not to become a club just like any other club that you can join. With activities and trips and social gatherings as the top priority. Not that those things are wrong to do as a church together, and we have them, and we do do things like that. But they can't be, and never should be, a substitute for the word of God. Amen? Amen. Peter was inspired by God to write about God's word and how it is living and enduring. Peter knew that the word of God endures forever. Emperor of Rome, Diocletian, issued an edict to destroy Christians in all of their Bibles. And this was around, I think it was in the year uh, 303 AD. There, there was serious persecution that followed the giving of this edict. And it said that Diocletian built a monument over a burnt Bible. And on that monument were these words, Extincto nomine Christianorum. And that name... That means the name Christian is extinguished. Well, he was wrong. And 25 years later, Emperor Constantine commissioned uh, Eusebius to prepare 50 copies of the Bible at the government's expense. God's word never dies. Amen? It is living and enduring. God's word doesn't change. God's word will never be extinguished It is eternal. In verse 24, Peter quotes Isaiah 40, verses 6 to to 8. All men are like grass, and their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord stands forever. Forever. 
We are again reminded of our temporary status here in this world. Remember, our uh, series is called Temporary Residence, right? We're temporary here. The word translated men in this verse actually is flesh in the Greek and the Hebrew. All attempts in the flesh will fail. All our earthly tents one day will die and decay, right? Our bodies. That's our earthly tent. Yet God's word is living and abiding in us. It is the incorruptible seed. And when the word of God is in us, it gives us new life. It's part of our inheritance. That is incorruptible. It is the word of God that is in us. Since we have this imperishable, incorruptible seed in us, it means that we are able and are obligated to sincerely love our brothers and sisters in Christ. If you aren't doing this, there's something wrong and you need to get that right with the Lord. Peter says, this is the word that was preached to you. So he goes through all of this. And he says, this is the word that was preached to you. It is the gospel message of Jesus Christ. It is God's word. God's word has survived over these thousands of years through manual writings, writing it down by hand. Oh, how far we've come, right? We can print out on our computer. It would take a few, probably a half an hour maybe, to print out a whole Bible on your home uh, computer, right? Your home printer. Instead of writing each and every little letter by hand, it survived manual writings, it survived natural disasters, it survived man-made attempts to change it, to destroy it, and yet it still remains today. Glory to God. Amen? Therefore, since this is the word, this word was preached to you, then do this, right? Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. We're going to go through those, though. But first of all, we've got the word therefore then, right? We got it there again. We've got to see what it's there for. Okay? So let's look at that. Uh-oh. There they go. All right. Ah, you did that to me. All right. What what is it there for? For your sake, Christ was revealed. For because of Christ, we believe in God. For you have been purified. For you have been born again. For you are like grass. Therefore, rid yourself of all this evil. Let's go through them real quick here just to make sure we understand. Malice, for me that's easy because M-A-L is bad or evil in Portuguese. So it helps me with that word real easy there. Uh, It carries uh, with it the idea of what it's made up with right in the word, evil. It's the intent to do evil to someone or something. And you hear it a lot in the courtroom settings uh, without malice or forethought, right? You hear that when you're watching your detective shows and they get in the courtroom, right? Yeah, without malice or forethought. If you're found guilty of malice in the court setting, you're probably going to get a lot more years added to your sentence. Deceit, we all know what that means. It means to lie, to deceive someone. And we talked last week about who the father of lies is, and that is Satan himself. Don't keep company with him. Don't be deceitful. Hypocrisy. That's saying one thing and doing another. Christians are often caught in this one. If you are a Christian and you believe in something, then you better be living it out in your life. You say, I'm a Christian, and I believe this, this, and this about God and about how I should, then you better be living it out in your life. Don't be one of those who give them another ex- excuse to just say they're all just hypocrites. When they look at you, let them look at you differently. Envy, that's when we desire something that belongs to someone else. Might be a really fancy car, a home, a stylish watch that your friend has. You know, he can talk into his and you can't, right? Or it might even be somebody else's husband or wife. 
Envy can be, as Aristotle described it, pain in the sight of another's good fortune. Do not envy. Slander is to say something that isn't true about someone, that often leads to damaging their character. We hear the word a lot today, defamation, right? The defamation of someone's character. Slander, get rid of every kind of slander. Peter's saying, now that you know what God's word means to you, now that you know what Christ has sacrificed for you, now that you know of God's love, now that you know that you have been purified by obeying the truth, having been born again, knowing that this world is temporary, as are these bodies we are in, and that God and his word are eternal, well, then seek these things and lay aside all that is contrary to God and his word. Don't let malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander take root inside of you. Rip it out of your life like a bad weed. Rip it out of there. Instead, now knowing Christ and his word, you are to be like newborn babies. Who doesn't like newborn babies, right? Well, they keep you up at like 3 o'clock in the morning, sometimes maybe not your favorite time of day to be hearing a baby cry but everybody loves newborn babies when a baby's born what do they crave they crave the milk from their mother a baby needs milk to grow and be healthy and strong and Peter says now that you are like newborn babies crave spiritual milk why would he say that well the answer is easy what do babies do when they drink milk? They grow, right? They grow. Crave spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. This is where discipleship comes into play. A person who has accepted Christ as their Savior and Lord should be discipled by someone who has known Christ and help them understand more about what it means to be one of his followers. Discipleship. Are you discipling someone? Grow up! That's the title of our message this morning. I didn't put the exclamation on there, but grow up, right? It's something you probably heard a lot, probably as a teenager when you did something dumb or that you weren't supposed to do, right? Like, would you just grow up? But I think a, an even better example is uh, that of a young child. When we're little kids, we can't wait to grow up, right? You couldn't wait to grow up. When I grow up, I want to be an electrician just like my dad, right? You hear little kids saying those kind of things. When I grow up, I, and you, you fill in the blank there. We look forward to it, didn't we? even though we didn't realize quite the challenges and responsibilities that come with being an adult, we look forward to growing up. Peter says, crave the spiritual milk. That's God's word. We need to go to God's word, not just today, here in church, not just tomorrow, but over and over again. We are all still growing up in our salvation we're all newborns. It doesn't matter how long you've known the Lord. We're still all newborns in the fact that we need to be going to God's word, reading it, studying it. Some of us are just in different phases than others, just like babies are. The question is, are you craving the spiritual milk in your life? Are you like that little kid do you used to be that's saying, I can't wait until I grow up? Are you growing your salvation up, growing up in your salvation that way, saying, I can't wait to continue to grow in my salvation in the Lord? I can't wait to see where this takes me with him. I can't wait to experience the Lord 
even more than I already have? Are you craving the spiritual milk for the growing in your salvation? Are you growing in your salvation? Are you fellowshipping with the Lord on a daily basis? Are you tasting his word? Psalm 34, 8 says this, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. When you come to Christ and know him as Savior and Lord, you have tasted and know that he is good. How many of you know that the Lord is good. How many of you have tasted and known the Lord is good? Just say amen. 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 So why at times do we keep him at arm's length or even farther from our lives? Grow up in your salvation. You have been saved. Now that you have, good. Grow in your knowledge and depth of insight of who God is and what he desires from you and for you. Amen. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your word to us this day. I thank you that your word is enduring and that it lives forever, Lord. Bless us, Lord, as we continue to grow in our salvation. Bless us, Lord, as we come to know you even more than we already do. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's stand, those who are able, as we sing our final hymn, Jesus Saves. Just a reminder to those who are joining the new members class, we will be meeting across from the library. And now, may God's love be upon you. May you grow in your salvation. Grow in your salvation. Grow it up this week. God bless you.